So all you have to do is to just zoom in with this roller, then click on this button to automatically select the adjustment brush. You can control the size, the flow with all of these buttons again. Click size and then as you move the dial, control the size with that. Let us just dab once to create a kicker light and then dab on the other side as well. And there we have it. If you think it is too much, you can even control the layer opacity like so. And then play with the dial. As you can see, the opacity is changing right there. It's such a tactile feel. Now we may think that there are just nine functions right here, but trust me, we are just scratching the surface. Before we get into any of this, let us just understand what these actually are. It's a two-set device from Logitech called the MX Creative Console for creatives like us. I've been using the Logitech MX series devices for a very long time. If you look back at my 500 videos, you'll still find I'm using Logitech maybe MX Master 2S. This is the 3S. I've bought three or four of those, even have been using MX keys for a long time for many of my other systems. So when Logitech offered to send me these, I was like, heck yeah, I want to try that. It's made to speed up workflows and make complex actions easy. For example, in here we have done blemish removal and then frequency separation. And on top of that, I want to apply liquify. But for it, we have to create a new layer, press Ctrl, Alt, Shift and E. None of that with this, just press this button. It automatically creates a merged layer of everything. And then again, we right click on it and then choose convert to smart object. We don't have to do any of that, just press another button. Done. If you want to apply liquify directly from this button, boom. Liquify opens up and from here, you can do whatever you want. I'm just going to open up the hair slightly and little changes like this do go a long way. This is tailor-made for creative applications like Photoshop, Lightroom, Premiere Pro and gives the editing control such a nice tactile feel. For example, I want to create a color lookup table for this one. Click on this, automatically created. Let us choose maybe crisp warm, but maybe it is too much. You can just play with the dial to control the opacity and that way, it is just such a nice way to control the amount of it. So I'm going to set it to about maybe 56. What do you think? Perfect. When you do get the MX Creative Console, it consists of two things, keypad and dial pad. The keypad has nine LCD screens, which are totally customizable. And these are actual screens. You can have it any way you want. Here I have my Pixinperfect logo. And if I press it, it's going to place my branding on the photo. From here, I can adjust it. Now, as I told you before, there are not just nine functions, there are 15 pages per app. So for Photoshop, you can scroll through 15 pages if you wish, which you can absolutely customize. And then you do get a fun to use style where all of these buttons are customizable and you can assign different functions for different apps. For example, it can be a simple scroll for Google Chrome. Time for me to show you the unboxing. We are going in reverse here. So the MX Creative Console comes in this nice box. And by the way, it does come in two colors. I went with the darker one because it's easier to maintain. Let's see, inside of it, we have another box. Now, when you open it, the moment of truth. Feels good to unbox a new gadget, doesn't it? I love the soft packaging right here. Takes good care of the device. So inside of it, you have the dial pad, the keypad, and what in the world is this? So it turns out it's the stand for the keypad, if you want to keep it that way. And placing it on this stand gives you a better reach. Plus, there's a channel for the wire to go, so it looks neat from here. Of course, I don't read the documentation, which you clearly should. And here's the good part. You do get a three month subscription to the full Adobe Creative Cloud complimentary with this one. So how do we set it up? The instructions are clearly shown on the device cover and it couldn't get more simpler than this. All you do is install this application called Logi Options Plus. It shows all of your Logitech devices. Let's click on this one. And the first time you do it, it automatically gives you the prompt to install the Photoshop and all of the other application plugins. So let's click on customize keys. You can even go to all actions, click on find more from marketplace. And here you'll find a plethora of plugins for different applications, like for After Effects, VLC Media Player. Once you install them, have a look, it will show up at the top. Let's click on Photoshop and it will show all of your Photoshop customizations. So when you open Photoshop, it will change to Photoshop functions. And here's the great part. You don't have to scour through keyboard shortcuts to set this all up. Most Photoshop functions are right here, even Photoshop actions. So let's say we open up layers. We have blending modes. We have edit all of those functions, which we can simply drag and drop. Let's add a new page. These are all the pages that I created. Click on plus to add a new page. And from here, just drag and drop. You can set a key to a particular blending mode or let's scroll down. You have this knob icon. Let's keep it right here. See what happens. Now, when we get back to Photoshop, this is at normal blend mode, right? If I activate it right now, the dial is activated. So when I move the dial, have a look, the blend mode changes. How cool is that? So soft light works perfectly. I'm going to stop right there. And you can search for functions. Let's say I want to merge all of it as a new layer. So let's 
type in merge and we're going to choose this one merge visible layers as a new layer let's say you want a function for convert to smart object let's see if we have that there we go and let's say you go to camera raw often so i'm gonna type in camera raw filter for this one now when we come back to photoshop we have all of these adjustment layers let us merge everything at the top convert this into a smart object so that we can change the values later and then camera raw and here you can do whatever adjustments you need so you can go crazy from here do whatever you want and have the effect of your dreams but just make it so simple with just presses of button and then if you think it is too much control that with this one so less opacity more opacity so let's keep it at about 72 that's nice one of my favorite features is whatever action you create no matter how complex that is it can be assigned a key. So right here, I have created a set of Logitech actions. You don't have to keep it this way. You can set any action. So I have this action called remove background. If I play it, it automatically removes the background and replaces that with white. Now let's say we need to assign this to one of the keys. We are going to scroll down and open up Photoshop actions user. Inside of that, you'll find it. If you're having difficulty, just search it. So it was remove background. There it is. And I'm just going to drop it right there. And by the way, you can modify the icon to your liking. Click on it. Click on this one. You can pick the color. Maybe you want the background color to be this red. Maybe you want the text to be white. And maybe you want it to be slightly bigger. You can even have your own photo. Let's save it. There we have our red remove background. And now let's go back to Photoshop. And all we have to do is to press this button. The background is automatically removed and replaced with the white background. Let's try another one. Let's press remove background. Boom, automatically done. Coming to my favorite section about how you can use it and how I use it in my actual professional workflow. So let's say you want to color grade it and I like to create an entire page just for color grading where you can add the adjustments you use for color grading and the tools. You can even take two pages. So in here, I always like to use curves. You already know that. Click on it, it automatically creates a curves adjustment layer. And from here, you can adjust the lighting. Maybe I'm going to make it brighter from here. That's great. And these areas, I'm just going to click and make it slightly darker. You can even also manually adjust it. Now, after you have done that, I also like to add a color lookup table. Boom, add it. And maybe let's go for crisp, warm or edgy amber, something like that. Now, this is, of course, too much. Let's decrease the opacity. By the way, I've set the dial to by default. Control the layer opacity if nothing else is activated. So we're going to set it to a nice number at about 26 that is fine. Now you can assign these keys too. maybe this one for undo and redo. Let's go back to Logi options plus and let's set this key to alt or option. Now, how can you set it to a particular key? Close it. Let's go to all actions and system. In here, you can pick the keyboard and drag and drop the keyboard shortcut right here. And I'm going to set it to alt or option. Depending upon Windows or Mac, you can set it accordingly and let's save it. Now, I don't have to move my hand that much to the keyboard. I can directly hold the Alt key or the Option key right here and have a look at the before and after like so. So this was color grading. What about retouching? And this is my favorite feature. Let's zoom in slightly. And all I have to do is to press one button, basic retouch, press it and Photoshop automatically with just one button retouches the entire photo. So. Here's the overall before. And again, I don't have to hold the Alt key or the Option key right here. It's just have it. Before, after. The way that it's working is that I use Retouch for me plugins. I've talked about it in videos here and there. You can watch those later. For example, I make a copy of the background layer. We go to Filter, Retouch for me. And there is one plugin for removing the blemishes. Retouch for me heal. And it automatically detects the blemishes and removes them. Let's make mask and apply. Now you have to apply another plugin for dodging and burning, another one for the eyes, so on and so forth. So I've created a series of Photoshop actions that plays all of these plugins one by one and places them in layers. Now you can find this action inside of Logi Options Plus and then just drag it and drop it like I have done right here. It plays the basic Photoshop action. Now I have another action that I just created to whiten teeth. I've set it to this key right here. Let's play it. Click on it. It automatically creates a hue saturation adjustment layer for whitening teeth, creates a black mask and selects the white color for you automatically. And then all you have to do is to just paint over the teeth and you are done. And the best part, it keeps it natural. So here's the before 
here's the after. If you want to do precise retouching, you can have all kinds of actions right here. Let's say I just want to remove the blemishes. I press this and again, it's linked to my Photoshop action for removing blemishes. If you want to learn more about those actions, here's the video. And if you want to get retouched for me, try it for free. Here's the link. So it automatically creates this layer which removes the blemishes. Here's the before. As you can see, here's the after, all of them gone. And from here, you can do frequency separation. This is an 8-bit photo. Click on frequency separation. It automatically brings up the Gaussian blur dialog box. 8 is fine, hit OK. It separates the frequency, low frequency and high frequency. Let's turn off the high frequency. Just above the low frequency, we're gonna create a layer. And maybe with the remove tool selected, let's target this particular area right here. There you go, gone. Now when you turn on high frequency, see how nicely it is gone? Here's the before and here is the after. Now do keep in mind there's a caveat to all of this. Whenever you create a new action in Photoshop, let us click on this one and let's create a dummy action. Let's record it. And let's say all it does is create a new layer. That's it, stop the action. Now when you open Logi Options Plus, keep in mind I'm working on a beta software right inside of Photoshop. If you search for it, or even if you look for it, scroll down, you'll not find the dummy action. You have to restart Photoshop, then restart Logi Options Plus at least that's what worked for me. So let's quickly do that. And now when we go here, customize keys and we go to Photoshop, let's see if we can find dummy. There we have our dummy action. Now bear in mind, it is not all perfect. There are certain things we need to watch out for or certain things which it can improve. Starting with, there are no native support for slider controls with the dial. For example, if you go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, there is no way I can link this slider to this. Yes, you can link it to the mouse drag and it gets very complicated, but there is no native way to do that. Secondly, you cannot even control the sliders with camera raw. So even if you were to go camera raw with just one button, which is fantastic, if you wanted to control all of these sliders with a dial, you cannot. Right now with this, we can zoom in and zoom out, right? But if you activate free transform, like so, now we can change the size, that is fine. But while the free transform is active, zoom in, zoom out doesn't work. While with the keyboard, it works fantastic. You can zoom in, zoom out as much as you want. Control or command plus or minus also works. So why not this one? I really feel that zooming in and out on specific areas is still much better, much faster, much more precise with the keyboard. All you have to do is to press command spacebar, control spacebar on Windows, just drag right or left to zoom in, zoom out to any area you want. You want to zoom into the hand right there? Boom! So darn easy. Coming to what I like about this, the tactile feel. It is just so fun to work with the dial where it is applicable. Secondly, it gives you a precise control of everything in there. For example, you select the brush tool. Inside of it, you have everything. You have the size. You can control the size very precisely. You can control the flow. Activate it control it very precisely. It's also very easy to install. Just open up that plugin inside of Logitech, for example, for Illustrator, you have all of these functions. So cool for Photoshop, you have all of these. For Lightroom, Classic, you have all of these functions. Let's say you wanna add something from the details panel and in here, noise reduction, you wanna assign a key to it. New page, noise reduction, there it is. All in all, it makes Photoshop fun. It's a good accompaniment, but here's what I realized. It's not a replacement for your keyboard. One little complaint I have is that, although this is super cool, amazing, I love to use it, I constantly have to move my hand to the keyboard, that I'm also working with my graphic tablet, that I'm also working with my mouse for other applications, not Photoshop. So there are lots of devices to deal with, but the best thing out of all of this for me are the one button actions, all in one place. Basic retouch, I have no words for it. How convenient this is before, after it's so cool so that's all for this video i hope i could show you something new and if you enjoyed it make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips tricks or tutorials i'll see you in my next one till then stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating one thing i know for sure what we have is something worth fighting for with bad news knocking at my door but i like